Okay, well, happy Friday morning to you all. Today is uh, the 14th of January. I think it's the 14th, 13th, 14th, something like that. Um, <laughs> I'll get into the Navi uh, saga yesterday. It was fun, different. Uh, I put my rack on a couple days ago, and uh, I'll do a video on that separately. Uh, I had my top box plate mounted on there for a Shad SH33. Didn't really work. I didn't like the, the angle of it, and it was kind of blocking getting the seat off of the uh, bike. So I put the little plastic plate back on here, and uh, I'm going to be drilling through that and setting the uh, the shad plate on top of that, so it's more stable and not cocked forward or backward or whatever. So I'm just back to the plain rack for now, and eh, it's okay, usable, but it doesn't really give you much uh, surface area to strap anything down. That's my gloved hand, so it's not very big maybe six and a half seven inches right here only about five at the back and four and a half or so wide so not very big anyway uh we'll get into that uh gotta get this thing going get started i'm late for work as usual key on choke on run 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 uh, <laughs> i ran this thing out of gas yesterday and pushed it a mile home uh, or a mile to the uh, fuel station anyway. As soon as I left my warehouse, it started sputtering, uh, so I flipped it over to reserve, and I took a gamble, a gamble, that I would be able to make it 15 miles home on my commute, and it only made it 14. <laughs> and I ended up uh, just up the road over here, uh, right at the corner where I would normally turn, and uh, it just blunk out, done. Sniffed fumes and coughed and gave up. So I pushed it a mile through the side of the park uh, on the little sidewalk and rolled over to Walmart to fill it up. So I got 68 miles, like 67.7 .7, I think, uh, before it was dry. Uh, and that's at my normal surface speed, uh, street commutes at about uh, 45 miles an hour, 47. Uh, that's not full open on the Navi, it's about 70%. Uh, you can get 50 or more out of it, but you're not really getting much uh, more speed for that full throttle adventure. So anyway, it's warm enough. I gotta go. I'm late. Okay. So it looks like the uh, fuel economy on the Navi is not quite as good as I had hoped. Uh, kind of the estimates that everybody was saying was uh, around 110 miles to the gallon, and I understand that that's going to be at very low speeds, you know, 35 or less miles per hour, which is never really going to be seen in a normal situation, uh, at least not around any of the major U.S. cities. Um, the range to empty is a little troubling. See, it just died. I took it off choke. It just died, so now i got to choke it. Um, and you can't run it on choke because it has no power, and now it picks up. Anyway, um... I'm hoping that carburation issues fix this because 68 miles to empty, 70 miles to empty is pretty poor range. If uh, someone's thinking about using this as a commuter or a delivery vehicle, you're going to be stopping all the time to fill it up. Uh, so you just died again. Dying, dying, dying. You can run it on choke for a little while, but it doesn't like running on choke either. So like right now it has no power taken off because it's running on choke, but it doesn't want to run off choke either. So you got to find a happy little medium somewhere kind of in the middle. See, no power, full throttle almost. Ugh. Take it off of choke and it picks right up. So this carburetor has definitely got issues. It's misadjusted, uh, jetting is wrong. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they're putting standard size jets in all these. They're not going to be unique for my case or for any particular area. It's going to be one size fits all, but I think, uh, air fuel mixture or something has got to be off on this carburetor it just doesn't want to run normally happily and it's very thirsty so now other navi owners have been reporting back to me saying that they're not having any idle problems at all while others are saying yes they are seeing the same so it's hit or miss uh, i guess just don't, kind of depends on your area or uh, how your navi was put together uh, i'm hoping it's just a carburetor thing and, you know that'll solve this thing's ails so, I haven't seen anybody else posting their fuel economy numbers, uh, at least online, but in my Discord server I've had a few owners report back saying this is about what they're getting, about 55 miles before it coughs and needs to go to reserve. So that's kind of indicating about the same 
economy that I'm getting around 75 to 80 uh, you know and if that's what it is that's what it is okay we'll just learn to live with it uh, but that's definitely going to force people to carry a, an auxiliary fuel bottle or something else with them uh, for any kind of urban or suburban commuting just uh, things to keep in mind with your new Navi if you are a new owner or a prospective owner fuel economy isn't the greatest it's nowhere near uh, what the fuel injected bikes are and uh, the small tank really hampers its range so as a point of comparison we'll start at the lowest end of the scale now let me preface this with yes I understand that you know running an engine at wide open you know full tilt boogie is going to lower its fuel economy versus an engine that's you know uh, running more in its efficiency envelope at around 50 to 60 percent whatever and I've already discussed that but we're talking about real world use you know you, you can't just tootle along at 25 miles an hour it's not gonna work <laughs> you're gonna get run over it's not a not a real world usage case so uh, anyway starting at the low end of the scale uh, my little Yamaha C3, 2007, 2008, 2007, Yamaha C3, 50cc scooter, fuel injected, uh, three valve, water cooled, great little machine. It gets, uh, on average, about 115 to 120 miles to the gallon tootling around town. If you run it full tilt boogie, wide open throttle, leave it pinned on the stop, it never gets less than about 107. So that's pushing that thing way out of its comfort zone, you know. Uh, and I'll, I'll add to that, the top speed on it is uh, around 45 miles an hour, 43 to 45. So almost what this one has. Now, uh, granted, the, uh, the Navi can get up to speed quicker than the C3 because it's got, you know, 109cc motor. So it's got more grunt. But in the overall scheme of things, you're still talking about... 45-ish miles an hour uh, and the Navi is getting 72 to 75 miles to the gallon at that rate which is a little odd so or at least my Navi is let me qualify that uh, so stepping up in the the range a little bit my Super Cub is a 125 cc fuel injected still air-cooled like this uh, and at the same speeds if I were to run these two side by side maybe I need to do that ah future video test if I run these side by side at the same speed 45 miles an hour this is going to get 40 or 75 miles to the gallon the Super Cub at that speed is going to get 135 miles to the gallon it's crazy and I mean, we're talking about a larger engine by 15 cc's or whatever uh fuel injected obviously but it, it just goes to show kind of the the relative economies here uh and you know, there are other differences with that with the super cub because it's chain drive versus belt drive yeah there's going to be other drive line losses and you know parasitic losses in the drive system but still now stepping up one more minor jump but back to a scooter instead of a motorcycle which the super cub is technically a motorcycle uh if i go up to my pcx 150s that's 150 cc water cooled two valve engine fuel injected of course and that thing at the same speeds if we ran these all side by side by side it would also be getting about 125 to 130 miles to the gallon so uh, it goes back to what i was saying a few days ago on the uh how does the navi fit in as a commuter if you're planning on uh, running at any speeds above 35 40 miles an hour for extended periods uh, or extended distances something like the pcx or the uh, grom or uh, cub or something like that is probably going to be a better overall commuter because of the the efficiencies involved not to mention the convenience of not having to stop and refill it as often so now the PCX has got a 2.1 gallon tank, so you can get 200 miles of range out of that one pretty consistently. Uh, the Grom, I don't remember how big its tank is. I think it was 1.4 gallons, something like that. I might be wrong. Uh, the Super Cub is one gallon right at. Uh, my little C3, stepping way back down the scale, it's got a 1.1 gallon tank. So yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm trying not to hate on the Navi, but you know, from a a usability and practicality standpoint it's uh, starting to show a few uh, shortcomings chinks in its armor 
so I don't know if I can get the carburation issues sorted out on this one or just replace the carb maybe I mean it's just a little what 16 millimeter carb you might be able to find some aftermarket or something from a different Honda that's uh, jetted and metered better and performs better I don't know, we'll see uh, then this might uh, might jump up in its uh, rankings on the quasi commutability board we'll see again I'm not hating on it I'm just I'm pointing out a few issues that owners or prospective owners should probably be aware of that way they're not uh, thinking it's all roses and lily fields and oh goody oh crap i'm stuck on the side of the road <laughs> now if i was going to run out of gas on this thing anywhere yesterday the timing was perfect on it i i felt that sense of dread as soon as it went oh crap it's really running out on me uh but i was right next to the park and uh <laughs> the timing was perfect, man. I just rolled right up onto the sidewalk next to the park and uh, had a nice little leisurely stroll with the Navi. It's not heavy, and it's flat ground where I am, so it's not a problem pushing it up hills or whatever. <clears throat> it worked out okay. I got a little exercise out of the deal. You know, this is my normal routine right here as far as speed and acceleration curve wise. I don't accelerate on wide open throttle. I usually back it out to, I don't know, 70, 80%. And I just kind of dial it in and let it sit there uh, at around 80%. It seems to kind of find its equilibrium right around 43 to 47. Uh, and just, you know, cruising at kind of that rate. So I'm not running it full open. Uh, I might occasionally open it all the way up to accelerate up, get away from traffic, but then I back out of it and just leave it at about 80%. So you can see it's settling in at you know, 44, 45 indicated. It's kind of where it is, and there's my there's my remaining throttle left. So I'm running at about 60 to 70, you know, about 70% throttle. And I'd be content. I'd be perfectly fine with uh, 45 miles an hour as a cruising speed on this thing. That would be fine if it would get closer to 100 miles to the gallon. And that would kind of bring it into the fray, you know, kind of average it out with the other commute tools and mini motos and stuff like that. But, you know, if it's trying to live its life as that uh, in that role and only getting 70 to 75 miles to the gallon, uh, that's not good. That's not good. I mean, hell, I can take my CB500F and get 70 miles to the gallon. Or any of my other ones for that matter. Get more. So that brings me back to uh, the ever-present question on the channel is because I own several of these mini motos, which one is my favorite? Which one would I keep out of all of them? I, you know, I have to keep going back to the Super Cub. The Super Cub is still my favorite uh, mini moto that I've got in the stable right now. As far as practicality, usability, it's probably the best. Now, as best commuter, eh, that one's a tough question because I can't really stay in the uh, the small bike family. Uh, best commuter is going to have to be the 500X, but the next best would be the PCX150. Uh, and the reason the 500X is the best is because it can get 65 miles to the gallon all day long and do highway speeds and go 250 to 300 miles on a tank of fuel. So, you know, it's just more practical all the way around. But uh, as far as an around town uh, tool uh, or minor, you know, highway access road commutes like this, say 40 to 50 mile commutes, uh, the PCX150 can't be beat in my book, man. It's awesome. ADV150 would kind of be in that same ballpark. I don't own that one, but I've ridden it. So uh, that PCX150, the new PCX160 should also be good. Uh, but I've not written that, so I can't give any opinions there. Uh, it's based on the same platform, but has a newer, more powerful, more efficient engine. So it should be a, a superb commute tool. So I've been swamped with work for the last you know, week or so. I've been vlogging as I go, and I've been using the Navi as my sole commute tool for the last two weeks. I haven't ridden any of my other bikes. haven't even started them up. Uh, so I've been 
doing kind of an unofficial uh, Navi 30-day challenge. And I kind of, I alluded to that in my live streams and just goofing off with the guys saying, okay, you know, if you, if you want my Navi, you're going to have to uh, leave your bike as ransom and use only the Navi for 30 days. And uh, I'm kind of doing it. I don't know if I'll be able to push through and do the whole 30 days, but we'll see. I'll be carrying a fuel bottle around with me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Yesterday's uh, fuel exhaustion run was not intentional. It was a gamble, uh, but I would not want to do that out on a busy road like this. That would suck. And I was on the access roads on the way home yesterday, so if it had choked out in traffic, that could have been a bit of a problem. But the silver lining to that is now I know where its limit is uh, at my average loads and road speeds and whatnot so 68 miles that's it if i get to 65 that's uh past the comfort zone right there 45 70 percent 80 percent and i think most navvies are going to live their life at about you know somewhere between 70 and 100 percent throttle most of their lives so I'm almost at 300 miles. I'll definitely be way over 300 miles by the time today's commute is over. Uh, I'll be doing my oil change probably over this weekend. Uh, I always like to do my first oil change early, uh, get the metal shavings and junk out of the motor. I ordered an MP01 uh, gold plug MP01 magnetic drain bolt. I don't know if it's going to fit this bike or not. I'll check uh, when I pull the drain plug out. If it does, then magnetic plug's going in. Uh, if not, then I'm going to measure out this plug and figure out uh, what other magnetic drain bolt might fit in there. Uh, just try to keep the contaminants out of the motor a little bit better because these don't have oil filters. they got a screen and that's it. They don't even have a spinner like the Super Cob, so oil is oil. Now, most scooter engines don't have uh, nearly as dirty of a crankcase as a motorcycle engine would because you don't have clutch, gears, any of that thing. It's just, you know, your bottom end bearings and sump of oil. That's pretty much it. So I don't know how long the camera's going to last. It might crook before I even get to breakfast because it is cold and cold kills these batteries quick. And I still haven't gotten used to that weird front brake feel. If you step on the, the rear lever, or the, the rear brake pedal, you get this on the front brake lever. It's weird. <laughs> and then you let off, and it doesn't change. But if you do that, you can see it go out by itself when you step off the pedal. That's weird. CBS. So I'll be headed up to the 600-mile uh, service. Yep, there we are, 301. Uh, I'll be headed to do the 600-mile service pretty soon at this rate. Right after that's going to be the 1,000-mile uh, review. I will definitely uh, be piling the miles on this thing and try to knock down 1,000 miles soon, as quickly as possible. Uh, I've missed doing the 1,000-mile reviews on my other mini motos because... They ended up doing road trips and crazy stuff where 1,000 miles is just a drop of a hat. And I was in the middle of it and didn't manage to uh, didn't manage to circle back on the uh, report. But I'll do that on this. I'll be sure and give my five likes and five hates. And, you know, I know list videos have kind of gone out of vogue. But uh, I think it's prudent for this. People should know what they're getting into for their low budget bike you know, a lot of people are getting these as first bikes so i think a lot of the little caveats are probably valid points for people to keep in mind and some of the points that i bring up might not be you know relevant at all not pertinent to other people uh, either because it doesn't match their riding styles and commute duties or uh, they don't have the basis for comparison you know other bikes that they ride and own to compare against so you know, either way take the back roads today it's red so keep on going path of least resistance drop a water down a window pane man left right left right as long as it keeps going One of these days, I guess, I need to change my vlogging rig here on the helmet and figure out a way to keep a battery pack plugged into the side of the 
audio adapter. I don't know. I don't like stuff hanging off between my helmet and me because then you know it limits your side to side head mobility. And I'm forever yanking on them and they uh, end up coming unplugged anyway. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. It would be nice to get a uh, USB C uh, MagSafe type connector like Apple has on their laptops. So the connections are magnetic and uh, you know, if you yank on it, it just comes unplugged. But then reconnecting it is as simple as just getting it roughly close and it goes doink. That would be cool. If anybody knows of a USB C MagSafe style connector out there, let me know. I would be grateful. Okay, I was right. The battery crooked before I made it to breakfast. <laughs> it died about, I don't know, three miles from here. Uh, these GoPro batteries don't like the cold. So, off I go. On 306 miles on the clicker. Nice G-Wagon. Those things have gotten stupid expensive. Okay, where do I go? All right, off I go. Man, this thing's trying to die again. It's just the idle, just, I can't get the idle to work on this thing. Gotta fix this carburetor. I guess it's time to start researching alternate uh, carbs that'll fit this thing. Uh, we'll go digging into, unfortunately it's gonna be foreign parts catalogs uh, to find something that works because we don't have any of these motors, engines here, you know, the scooter powertrain here in the States. I'm wondering if maybe the little, uh, the carburetor off of the Honda CRF 110 would work. Uh, same displacement. I don't know. I'll have to look at that. Look at the uh, inlet, outlet sizes, the intake elbow, all that, see if it works. That might be a better carb. Uh, I had one of those uh, little bikes for my son, and the carburetor wasn't great on it, but it seemed to do okay. Uh, it was a little cold-blooded uh, when you'd first start it, but after that, I never had any problems with it, uh, except for you know the jets getting gummed up if you left ethanol fuel sitting in it for more than a few weeks. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe the carb from a CRF 110 would work. If I get into modifying this thing, putting a big bore kit on it or anything else, then uh, obviously different intake, different exhaust. Uh, I have to put a different carburetor on there anyway. At least rejet. ZX man, I think it was. I need to look back on my uh, Discord server conversations, but I'm pretty sure it was ZX man. He ripped his carburetor off and pulled the jets out and got the jet sizes and numbers and all that and posted them in the conversation there so jump over to my discord server and you can find a bunch of pictures of people tearing into their navvies already that's cool i haven't had time to get into mine yet i will soon very soon hopefully <laughs> i got air the navvy got air over that manhole cover nice both wheels left the ground It gets away from traffic pretty good, wide open. It's up 35, 40 pretty quick. Ooh, there's a rare bird. Okay, well, I have arrived. I'm gonna work today. Uh, here at the warehouse and got a couple of other stops I need to make but uh, pretty much going to be here most of the day taking care of uh, remote issues and loading up a couple PCs rebuilding a laptop or two I might have to do a firewall swap for a customer so anyway parked at the warehouse here with 311.0 on the clicker uh, so by the end of the day today probably be about 340 ish range and uh, I'll do the first oil change possibly this evening. I don't know if I want to get into it or not. Uh, but if not, I'll do it tomorrow morning, Saturday morning. And 
see if my gold plug MP01 fits this. If not, then uh, I'll take the measurements and figure out what I need uh, for a magnetic drain bolt and uh, keep piling on the miles on the little Navi. Carburation issues aside, I, I, I really enjoy the bike. Uh, I've got to sort out the uh, fuel economy thing. If I'm going to make it more of a useful commuter for me, uh, definitely going to carry a fuel bottle. I was thinking about strapping a fuel bottle right there, right there, right there. Might work. Back here, I think, if I put it underneath the uh, the shad plate, it's going to be sitting here just a little above this, uh, you know, on top of it. And uh, I think the bottle would obscure the taillight too much, so I'm not going to put it there. Uh, I could put it on the right side, but I never like doing that. I mean, it's not like this exhaust is really hot, but if you got a leaky fuel bottle, you don't really want it dripping over on a hot exhaust. That could cause you a little bit of a problem. Uh, so, yeah, I think left side might work for a fuel bottle. And I don't think that'll get in the way of a pillion, if I ever put a pillion on here. My wife doesn't ride with me much, so... Oh yeah, that'll work fine. It's not going to be in the way of the leg. I'm getting down, you probably hit it with your leg, but yeah, whatever. This is about functionality. So, anyway, that's the Navi. Commute diary, day number what? I don't know, what, 13, 14? Maybe I need to do a new series on that, huh? Catch you later.